Hello, this is my review of the Ambient Weather Observer Solar Powered Wireless Wi-Fi Weather Station WS-1000. Instead of unpacking it piece by piece, I decided to save time and just show you what comes in the box. It's uh, well packaged, each piece is wrapped in plastic, bubble wrap, and then it's all set inside a preformed cardboard type packaging unit uh, that also goes inside this box, and then that box is packed inside of another box when they ship it to you show you now is at the top of the outdoor sensor array is a shaft. It's a half moon shaft and it's got a flat spot and a notch in it that the wind vane attaches to. It's very important that you don't force the wind vane on. You can see where my fingernail was is a notch uh, where the set screw for the wind vane attaches and then you can see the flat spot on the other side. It should slip on very easily um, and the set screw should fit right in that notched part. Three AA rechargeable alkaline batteries are included with the kit for the outdoor sensor array. The sensor array has a solar panel so you have to use rechargeable alkaline batteries. Also in the unit is a level, a bubble level at the very top. You should mount this unit so that you can see it at eye level and you can have access to cleaning out the rain gauge. On the back side of the sensor array you'll see there's the battery compartment right there. Underneath there's a LED on the right side that blinks every 16 seconds that the unit is powered on. And then on the left side there's a reset button. Uh, it's difficult to see the LED at in, during the daytime but at night it's very easy to see. Um, also the battery compartment I recommend that you don't over tighten the screw or you'll strip the plastic threads um, or break the compartment mount. Um, something else I want to show you is inside there's a plastic like bar inside that is used for alignment and locking the utility pipe adapters into. Um, you want to make sure that that pipe aligns and locks into that. Um, otherwise your anemometer wind direction will get messed up. Um, there's two different pipes. There's the straight pipe and then the crimp pipe. That would go into like another uh, antenna pipe or anything like that. Um, I use the straight pipe because it goes on to another type of fence post. Uh, there's the U-bolts that will clamp that pipe um, to whatever you need to clamp it to. Those little slots lined up in that pipe. Um, You can see the slot there and the slot on the other side. And then it will line up with the plastic slot inside. Sometimes you have to turn it to twist it and make sure that it's locked in place. And then you take the locking ring collar and place that on the unit. It should slip down fairly easily into the holes. And then you turn it to the right and until it locks. And then if the sh pull won't pull out, it's secure. The Allen wrench that is to be used to mount the wind vane on top of the outdoor sensor array. Um, I'm putting it into the set screw and you'll notice on the bottom that there's the half moon shape of the that matches the shaft that it attaches to. Now this should slip on very easily do not force it. Um, if you're forcing it, it's not lined up properly. Um, I'm going to line it up and slip it on, and then I'm going to set the set screw. Now, do not over tighten the set screw. If you do, you have a uh, high probability of damaging the threads or breaking the mount. Um, once it's set in place, it'll be nice and secure. Now, you'll want to make sure that once you've got the wind vane mounted and you're ready to mount this outside, that you use the leveling bubble to make sure that this is level. If it's not level, the weather vane will always go to wherever side it's leaning. Also, the rain gauge may not work properly if it's not level. Take a look at the indoor temperature, humidity, and barometer sensor for mounting inside the house. Uh, there is a display on that unit so you can see it when you walk by it. Um, it's recommended to mount between 5 and 20 feet from the console um, and it takes two AAA batteries to run it which are not included. The console has 
a couple different ways to display it. There is uh, on the back. There's two holes for a wall mount, and um, there's no screws for that. And then there's a flip-out stand, and I prefer the flip-out stand. It uh, gives a nice look to the display on your desk. There's also a power connection and a reset button and the micro SD card on the right side of the console. Um, it's a pretty nice unit. This is the home screen display. In the upper left corner, you'll see a graph. That graph can read pressure, temperature, or humidity. Um, every time you switch the graph to the different selections, say right now it's on barometer, I switch it over to temperature, that graph will reset. You can also change the timeline. Right now it's up to 24 hours, but you can go from a minimum of 12, I believe, up to 72 hours. Then you have uh, wind direction, gives you in degrees, and it's got north, south, east, west. Um, in the top right corner, you've got wind speed, current wind speed. Uh, you've got wind gust just below that, and you've got wind chill. You've got your Wi Fi indication, shows your transmitting uh, or connected Wi-Fi and what your signal is. You've got your indoor temperature which is related to your small sensor that you mounted in the house. You've got your outside temperature and then you've got your dew point. You also have rainfall. Currently it's uh, daily rain in inches. You can cycle that through uh, weekly rain, monthly rain, yearly rain, uh, rainfall rate inches per hour. I like to have it on daily rain. Then you've got your barometer. You can change your brightness of your display. Um, I like to keep it at about 50%. It's good for daytime reading and nighttime reading. You can turn your display off by pushing this third button from the left. I leave mine on all the time. Over here on the far right you've got settings. If you click on that they'll go to setup. Uh, you can set up your date and time, temperature units, barometer units, wind speed units, rainfall units, solar radiation units, rainfall display, graph time, your barometer display, weather threshold, storm threshold, current weather, rain, uh, rainfall season, uh, January, or, or is set up for January right now, interval, uh, weather server, and Wi-Fi scan. These two are very easy to set up you can hit tools again. The tool button has moved over one. This is a return or backup button. Here you can set up your alarms for your highs and low on your alarms if, if you want to do that. Hit the tool button again and it'll go to calibration. And this unit is very nice because you can calibrate your temperatures, indoor, outdoor, your barometer, your wind direction, rain. It's nice to be able to calibrate your sensors. I had to calibrate my barometer for the location we're at. You can go back to factory settings, you can change your language, you can back up your data. Like I said, you can reset to factory defaults. If you push the tool button again, you go back to the original setup page. If you don't want to do anything with the setup, you hit the back button. Here is a history page. Uh, you hit it again and it'll actually put it out on like an Excel sheet hit it again it puts it onto a graph go back to maximum min after you hit it once more well that's a basic overview of the screen I really like the console remember it's not a touch screen and you need to use the buttons down below I uh, think you'll really like it if you purchase the ambient weather WS1000 uh, I've enjoyed it uh, it looks like a really nice unit it's better than any other unit I've had I hope that you enjoyed my review. I hope this was informational and have a good day.